Hello, good morning. Good morning to UG program for uh, uh, corporate publication, production of corporate publications. And if you remember in the last class, uh, we discussed a lot about uh, uh, image editing. We, we discussed about text editing over, but uh, we were discussing about the images. How do we, what are the importance of, um, we discussed about the various types of illustrations that we come across in a publication. And we know different types of publications. All of us know, we studied in first and the second units itself, uh, different types of um, publications. So just to refresh your memory, Publications can be like poster, okay, pamphlet, booklet, your annual report, manuals, um, okay, um, manuals, handbooks, uh, okay, diaries, calendars, anything that is printed, it can be considered as a publication. So we discussed that uh, in the earlier uh, session and we discussed the text component of it, how to write it, how to edit it and all those things. Then we also, uh, uh, you know, were convinced that uh, text alone doesn't make a publication. We need illustrations. We need illustrations to give, uh, you know, more life uh, to whatever we use in the form of text. So illustrations give life to a story, to a text. Besides um, that, uh, a photograph or an illustration gives uh, truthfulness and it explains uh, to the reader uh, everything in a very quick manner. So that is why often it is said a photograph is equal to thousand words. So all of us know the importance of illustrations. And we discussed about different types of illustrations like reflection and transmission illustrations. Okay, and we also discussed about uh, captions that go under illustrations. I mean, uh, what is it when we describe a photograph, a little few lines, one or two lines, few words, under the photograph, which describes a photograph that is known as caption. Caption is essential to understand a photograph. Not everyone can understand a photograph. You and me may know the photograph of Vice President Venka and I do, but the same thing may not be understood by someone who is from a neighboring country. So it is essential for us to mention in the bottom. Even ourselves also many people may not know. So we need to inform, give some basic information about the photograph. So there should be some relevance of uh, what you mention under the photograph and the photograph. So you cannot mention something else. So you must mention Honorable Vice President, Sri Venka and I do, in the picture, whatever it is, in the picture. So that becomes a caption. And we also discussed about how we actually get all these images. In our present day, in your, our present day era, it is a digital era. And everything is done through computers. Unlike the earlier days when we used to have everything in an analog manner. So we can forget about the analog part of it because we are now completely, uh, analog has become extinct uh, to a great extent because uh, we, we hardly have, maybe still we do have some situation where analog is used. Anything that is not analog is nowadays known as digital. In other words, whatever you get through your computer, so we get all the images now in the form of a, a file format. It can be in the form of a JPEG. It can be in the form of a PDF. It can be in the form of EP, you know, encapsulated uh, postscript EPS. It can be in the form of TIFF tagged information file format. It can be in the form of J, a JFIF you know, that is called a joint file interchange format and joint photographic export to JPEG. So these are all the formats in which we get the images. This is essential for you to know because when you are uh, uh, holding the responsibility of getting all the illustrations from various sources, it is essential for us to know that we have to have a, a kind of uh, what is known as, uh, what is essential for us is to know that you should know how you're getting the images uh, because sometimes what happens, uh, you may not have that kind of uh, compatibility in your computer to download some of these images sent through different uh, or various file formats, like how we discussed PDF, EPS, 
some computer system may not have so better better uh, ensure yourself that your computer is compatible to take all file formats through which images are normally sent by your sources from wherever you are getting the uh, images so you, so please remember that this is the terms that are used uh, so we call them as images uh, please remember illustrations pictures photographs images like that we have have it so please remember this is how we have it one Okay, sorry for that interruption because of an unavoidable phone call. I had to interrupt the class. Anyway, that um, having said that, uh, uh, we have these uh, things known as the uh, the the images. Uh, images we have seen, for instance, which which are obtained in the form of file format. So all of us should know that we get the images through this way. It can be any image. We discussed also. It can be a artist sketch it can be a pen drawing pencil drawing crayon drawing oil painting watercolor it can be a photograph a cartoonist cartoon so it can be an artwork anything it can be it can be in that form this is what we discussed in the earlier class we also discussed about editing and illustration editing of illustrations and photograph so today i will give you a presentation um, i will show you some slides so that you are able to easily see the slide and understand what i am trying to tell you so we have got we are going in the same sequence as it is given in your course material so when you see this um, uh, you know slide you will be immediately able to understand yourself oh this is what i was trying to tell you by by saying what we mean by photoshop i was telling you that sometimes we need editing of the photographs i was also telling you that uh, to the extent possible try to avoid um, uh you know editing of the photograph if you have deadlines are very short like for instance for instance in a newspaper our deadlines are very few hours few minutes only sometimes so we can't really edit a photograph there because this editing of photograph or illustration is time consuming even if you are a skilled person even if you are an expert in photoshop illustrator page make illustrator and uh, in design and other software corel draw all these things for instance so the paint brush these are all known as uh, softwares which are used to edit the images but if you have some time like in a house journal you have about a month's time or 15 days time you can think of editing so first of all don't jump into editing and illustration try to see whether you can avoid editing try to get any other photograph because in digital um, technology uh, the number of photographs that we can get uh, can be very high unlike the early earlier time film and then processing it used to cost time money and everything material here in digital everything is in the form of soft version so you can get you have a choice to eliminate a bad photograph or eliminate a photograph which needs too much of editing so try your best to select the best photograph with with no editing or minimal editing the time constraint is very very uh, time factor is a very essential thing that you should keep in 
mind. So now let me try to share you the screen so that we'll discuss each slide uh, as they share the screen. <coughs> One minute, please. Okay. So let me see if I can. Yeah. Okay, right. So now we can see, for instance, I hope you will be able to see it. So can anyone tell me whether you are able to see the screen? I hope you are seeing the screen. Uh, one minute. So here, here is the slide. So are you able to see the screen? Can anyone tell me whether you are able to see the screen? Yeah, I think I'm sharing it. I'm already seeing. Now, for instance, this is the slide which I am now showing it to you. This is an example of Photoshop. You see the bottom picture and the top picture. The bottom picture is the original photograph that you might have taken, you know, in, on, on, on some evening you might have taken. Now this picture you have taken, now you don't have any other picture. <coughs> and now you can edit this picture. So you can remove. What? You can remove the unwanted things at the back of this particular photograph. So you see the bottom picture and the top picture. So we try to remove all the interfering light and other things, shades and other things. You are able to see the image in a better way. And this is, for instance, the editing of a photograph. And, and we have used Photoshop for this particular thing. So please remember that when we try to use this particular image, I edit this photograph. This may take a lot of time, you see. All this uh, thing to be done, please remember, it will be in a, in, in a way, you know, you need to be very careful. One minute. I'm sorry, but I have to. Uh, okay, there's some noise coming, that's why I have to go. So, this is an example of Photoshop before, uh, you know, before editing, you can see, and after editing. So, before editing, sorry, before is actually bottom. I have put this wrongly. Before is actually bottom. Okay, and after is top. So, this is, this is slightly typed wrongly. Uh, okay, now it tells you the correct thing. Before is this, and the top one is after. So I have edited this uh, picture, and this is an example of how editing is done. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that you would prefer to have a photograph like this uh, instead of having a photograph like this and editing it. If you are having choice of two photographs like this, please select this one, that's all. But if you don't have a choice, and your photographer brought only this photograph, light early persons are light fade person, look at this channel. You brought this. And your boss is saying that you have to use this photograph. And then you, when you put this photograph, everybody will criticize you that this is a bad photograph. And I told you also that uh, no photograph is better than a bad photograph. But then what happens is you can sit with your uh, graphic artist or the person who is looking after your desktop publishing, who is well versed in these softwares called Photoshop, discuss with him whether this can be rectified, whether this can be modified, whether this can be edited, whether this can be cleaned up, whether this can be, you know, made fine-tuned. And then your person will tell you, yes, we can do it, but it will take for me uh, one or two hours to do it because it has to be done skillfully. Like how an artist does certain things on a paper, this has to be done on the monitor with the help of the mouse and with the help of the tools that Photoshop provides to the graphic artist. So if you say yes, there is some time, then you, he will be able to edit it and you see the the, the top one afterwards, after editing uh, what the kind of a photograph that you have got here. So this is an example of uh, what we call it as the uh, Photoshop. And likewise, we have what is known as uh, we have what is known as a, a, a next uh, thing known as uh, graphic card software, Photoshop uh, and you know, known as Photoshop is 
However, we have what is known as page maker. Page maker is different from what we try to uh, say. You know the way we say about page maker. For instance, you see this. So page maker, as the name implies, is suppose you have an entire data, all the text, for instance, whether it's the text or anything, all the information you have in the form of a uh, text, for instance, you are printing a Bible, which is completely a text matter, or a, a novel or anything, for instance, I make use of page maker. What I do there is that I make one master page. You see a master page. So I determine all the page boundaries, how much margin should be here, how much should be here, how much should be here, how much should be here. So these are all the four sides, which we call it as the back, head, fore edge, and tail. So I take care of all these margins. I fix these parameters, and I ensure that this is going to be the page format. So once I fix all these things, PageMaker software will break all the data into a number of pages. It gives the page number automatically, and there you get it. Entire data, which has been keyboarded, is there right in front of you, where it is converted into pages. So PageMaker is a software which doesn't edit any pictures. Please remember that. It doesn't edit any pictures. It doesn't edit any text. You can, to some extent, make some corrections on the text in PageMaker, but by and large, PageMaker will make pages of the continuous data, where it is actually, you know, a continuous data, like I gave you the example of a novel or of a Bible or any religious book. You can convert that entire thing into in no time. So a thousand page Bible can be entire information, which is not in the form of pages, but one page you master, page you create, and then you send the data and the whole thing is converted into uh, pages by the page maker. But you have to also manually also check all the pages to be on the safer side for continuity and for any other thing. So any small thing that page maker is not able to do, manually the operator will intervene and he will rectify any things that are required uh, by the software. So that is this is known as an Adobe page maker. The earlier one is, was known as Adobe Photoshop. This is known as a page maker. Likewise, we have what is known as Illustrator. Now, Illustrator and Photoshop, you know, they do try to, some of the tasks of Photoshop are included in this, some of the tasks of this are included there. But this is an exclusive task and where you can see from the illustration that a lot of uh, uh, cut, cut out, cut color work, line work, and other things can be done. Illustrator, as if you are drawing some illustration. So for this nature of uh, work, Illustrator works uh, very good in the form of uh, software. So please remember, uh, this is one important area where you have this uh, software which helps you to do uh, Illustrator as, you know, where you are getting this kind of uh, diagram. So please remember that we have to have what is known as uh, an illustrator has always what is known as it's a, it's, it's a companion of uh, Photoshop. Actually, it goes along with it. But when you want to draw, say, maps or logos or infographics or, uh, you know, for instance, uh, uh, the infographics or package design, anything else that you want, for instance, uh, a very high quality variety of illustrations. OK, and you can also have text and illustration as per requirement. So sometimes for children's uh, uh, textbooks you can see in children's book lots of illustrations which are drawn by the artist so, so sometimes a cover page illustrator will be very handy when you want to do a title cover or very we call it as some unique drawings are required in photoshop we are only just getting the photograph and editing it here we are actually producing the drawings so a person who is using this illustrator should be an artist and he should be well versed in uh, you know the drawing related works and uh, they will always need this, NEPRO will be needing this to a great extent uh, for special um, uh, areas like, you know, uh, like title covers, like any other uh, things that you want. Let us take, for instance, another um, software similar to this, but called as Coral Draw. So we have what is known as the Coral Draw, which is again a very useful, uh, uh, very useful uh, software where it is, it, you know, you, you make, can make use of tools and then on the monitor itself, you can draw with you. You can get the tools like pen, pencil, brush, everything you can get through this uh, thing. So, so many people like a teacher or an artist or a student or when he wants to do something, he can easily do produce these things uh, the, the, using this particular software like logos, 
like arranging layouts and touching up of photographs you can do that with the help of this you know you can design newsletters you can design banners calendars scrap books and several other things so, so this is one of the areas where this is like illustration corel draw also helps you to improve your um, you know improve your work uh, in in a, in a better manner now having uh, used these softwares uh, now the next thing is now you have the text you have the illustrations you have the edited text you have the edited uh, illustration both are ready now how will you now arrange them in a page so that is the next thing known as placement of illustration in a page so you have illustration you have a headline you have a text you may have a logo and how will you place them in a page let us take this as a page how will you position them in a page this is very essential for us that is designing a layout how would you position that also matters a lot uh, that simply uh, say you you cannot say i gave you the best best text i gave you the best illustration and you have failed no it is your responsibility to ensure that in addition to giving these uh, uh, best illustration best text uh, best headline it is your responsibility to see that they are positioned in the best manner possible so that the reader is attracted uh, you know spontaneously and goes through all the elements on of on the page elements in the design so it is very to take let us for instance take a advertisement advertisement has four elements heading illustration text and the address so unless the reader goes through all the four elements he will not be tempted to buy the product just like that we 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 expect that in a magazine you are you are now you are printing a magazine at that time you will be taking care of what is known as ensuring that the reader is able to go through the entire page if he skips which means it is your failure of not having placed the illustrations so these are all a part of um, things that you will be able to gain experience over a period of time because uh, as you keep publishing as you bring, keep bringing out corporate publications over a time over a frame of time you will become more adept adept means experienced and expert in um, uh, trying to make use of uh, the technology at your disposal to ensure that everything is in place we uh, after all our the the objective of any corporate publication is not simply because you are asked to produce a publication now uh, you have finished your publication there over i have finished 5000 copies i supplied it to my chairman no that is not sufficient what is essential is that whether this publication has been put to proper use for which you have actually aimed has it served your aim has it served the purpose for which you have actually started the publication at the first place so we assume that that we have this and then please remember and the next uh, dimension that we have in case of this is that now so these are all the things that you have in a then in an sometimes what happens in a publication or even in an exhibition also when you display some of the photographs in an exhibition in your organization or when you want to have a group of photographs set of photographs belonging to a particular event for instance as a center spread in a magazine for instance you have a magazine you have a center spread okay one minute i will show you what is center spread uh, i will i can show you that later also so center spread is something like this Uh, I don't know if you are able to see. Uh, this is center spread is when you can have what is known as a group of photographs completely in a collage. C O L L A G E, not E G E. E G E is collage. Collage is a combination of all the photographs. We mount all the photographs because we mount them. We call them as photo montage. So here we have a photo montage. All a group of photographs which are becoming a part of your uh, two pages side by side. and this is also one kind of an illustration which is um, frequently used by pros for their house journals for their annual reports for their magazines for their souvenirs um, for anything that they bring out colorful magazines that they bring out many a time they make use of uh, photo mont montage montage or montage so for instance we uh, you are having a 50th um, 50th uh, uh, year celebrations of your organization you have conducted an event over a period of one week celebration so you have collected all the photographs of all the seven days and then you have collected and then the best of the photographs you have grouped them together and when you group them together and put it like this it is known as 
photomontage. So you may get in a stop on the question, what is a photomontage? I am trying to show you with the example. Another important area that you should always remember is that of what is known as um, uh, is that of diagrammatic representation. What do we mean by diagrammatic representation? But before that, we will try to see how we can. I now stop sharing. Then I will show you what we mean by the other things. So please remember, after this, we must be able to know always how do you source the illustrations through emerging media. How are you going to get that? Hey, I, I mean, let's. Uh, So how do you get this um, thing uh, through emerging media? How are you able to get? Uh, why? Why do we call them as emerging media? Nowadays, the uh, the earlier days before when just when internet came, we really did not have these things known as Facebook. We did not have Orkut. We did not have Twitter. We did not have Instagram. We did not have many things that came later. Uh, you know, many uh, social media platforms came later. And all this constituted into what is known as emerging media. So, if, if, so taking into consideration, uh, before that, before that we got everything as we discussed it, reflection copy and transmission copy. We got everything into in the form of hard copy as well as in the form of uh, uh, even a, you know file formats also. But nowadays, you know, we, we we just copy the illustration and get it uh, through internet and internet itself we are able to do. It has become very easy. It has become very quick and timely to procure illustrations. One of the most important thing is uh, that, as I told you earlier, when you are trying to get the pictures from the social media or from the Google, please remember you have no right to just simply copy them and use it for your publication. Always remember you have what is known as a copyright factor in the emerging media. Don't think that you can just have it. For instance, I use, for instance, a lot of illustrations from Google, but I give in the caption, courtesy Google. At least we should give credit uh, to the source from where you are getting all the illustrations. And essentially, always remember, you, as I told you in the earlier class, do not copy as you like, because sometimes what, if it is for meant for printing purposes, we are discussing about publication. It is meant for publication. You must ensure that these pictures may not be really, you know, compatible, suitable for reproduction purposes, for printing purposes. So you'll have to be very careful about that aspect. Like the resolution uh, on the screen that we see is different from the resolution that we see on a paper. Like for instance, I have here a magazine. I have here a magazine. So on a paper, there is the picture that I see on the monitor, and then on the same picture when I see on the paper. There is a lot of difference in terms of resolution. So you cannot copy some resolution from the screen and then try to print it. At that time, in printing, you will not get the same resolution. And in fact, you will be spoiling the image of that. So you'll have to be very careful about how you're trying to trying to copy. Number one, whether you got the copyright. Number two, whether you've taken the permission. Number three, whether you've purchased the photograph and you have got the copyright yourself. Number four, whether what you have copied fits the suits the technical parameters for printing purposes. Now, who will tell that you are not a technical man? Then who can a PRO keep on doing all this job when he has many other works? Yeah, very good. So what is the best thing is to ensure that you get in touch with a, a technically competent person uh, uh, who, who can be a, called a DTP operator, who can be able to tell whether a photograph that you have submitted through some format, whether it is fit for the production or not. He will tell immediately, this is not fit, get another photograph of a different resolution. So many times also we submit photographs for our magazine publication. He tells us, can you please get a better photograph? It is not suitable. So that itself speaks that we need to source our illustrations carefully. We cannot do as we like. Now there are certain areas where we have, uh, why, uh, you know, always do's and don'ts. Whenever we, have, we deal with either hard copy illustrations or soft copy illustrations, we have the ten, uh, uh, you know, do's and don'ts. Uh, please remember, the photographs can, a picture should not be crowded with too many details. Too many details should not be there in a picture. Yeah, normally, then you please use simple ones with clear details. Suppose you have a choice, uh, try to see which is very clear. Clear means sharp images, contrast images. You are able to reproduce them easily. Simple. 
with clear details. Then again, do not overcrowd with too many details. Please do one important thing is that your illustration should be more attractive with a tint background. Sometimes, you know, instead of white background, you can have a simple, very cream, yellow, or a cream, or a light blue color, sky blue background. The background can make your pictures more effective, particularly like that. And similarly, if it is a multicolored picture, you know, you have a very beautiful quality of paper. You know, I have here a beautiful quality of paper called as the real art paper. So I have an art paper which is smooth and glossy. You can print it on that so that it gives a better uh, rendition, a better reproduction of the image. So if it is a photo montage, you must be able to give a write-up also. Please ensure the photo montage is just printing the photograph. You give a, in the bottom of the photo montage, maybe you can give, you can number the photograph and you can give each number a little description of what exactly is the photograph trying to do. And give the credit of that artist. Whoever does that, give it a small somewhere in the bottom left hand or a right hand corner. Give the credit to the artist who prepared, say, for instance, a photo montage. So that you should always try to motivate and encourage the artist. Sometimes the layout artist, there is a specialist known as a layout artist. The layout artist is the person who is expert in placement of illustration in a page or preparing a photo montage or some such thing. So that is very essential for us. And the editing photographs of the photo montage should be, you know, pasted on a thick white drawing sheet. The sheet should not be folded after mounting the photographs. So please be very careful. In case of a photo montage, you put it on an entire big sheet of your paper. Don't fold that sheet, but go and paste it on your, you know, the big board, display board. How do you do it? Either it's a, you pin it or you do it very carefully. You can do it. These are all do's, actually. Do not are also very important. Always do not mix up, uh, you know, the illustrations. Uh, but there should be a balance of all the pictures that you try to position them. That is very essential. Okay, uh, because just because too many photographs are available, don't go for photo montage. It, what is the purpose of photo montage? Is it really you relevant? Is it really serving the purpose for which you want to have a photo montage? But sometimes we are all think, jump to conclusion that we have enough photos, why don't you have a montage? Don't have photo montage because you have enough pictures. If you want to have a photo model, decide for a photo model, then go over the illustration. If you don't have also go, go and get those photographs. That is very essential. And please remember, photo model is meant for a single theme only or event. As I told you, for the 50th anniversary, it is an event. It is a single event. So never mix up uh, uh, photographs of some other event in this and this event, this event. It will become a kichidi. Don't do kichidi of uh, photo montage. The write-up meant photo should be short. Be crisp and enticing to read. It should be in script, preferably in big letters because you're seeing it from a distance and it should be very short. It should be, you know, so that everybody is able to understand what is known as the a photo montage. So, what is the uh, right and note on image? So, what is an image? So, any image can be like photograph, drawing, like image or illustration, all are one of the same uh, graphs, typography, numbers, symbols, geometric design, everything is under the image. Anything other than text is normally an image. Typography means, for instance, an ornamental letter that you use, it's also an image. Okay. So what is the, what is the Photoshop? What exactly we do with that? So that is another area which you should be able to know. So we have graphics, graphics are those. Uh, Corel Draw, we have discussed about Corel Draw, page makeup, we have discussed about that. Now we go to the next um, topic, uh, or next unit known as Unit 5, Diagrammatic Representation. So I have covered about half an hour for you to tell you about the editing of illustration, to tell you about the various software used for editing the illustration, various software used for getting special types of um, illustrations, like in Adobe uh, uh, Illustrator, uh, like in Corel Draw, we have dis we discussed that also. We discussed about what exactly is a page maker. We also discussed about how illustrations are placed. We should also know that uh, earlier also we discussed that when you have uh, too much of data in the form of numbers, in the form of text, and uh, you can't subject the reader to read so much of text, he doesn't have so much of patience, nor does he have time to go through all that. So he expects uh, 
the entire data should be to be shown in the form of what is known as uh, uh, a diagrammatic representation. So let me see if I can share the screen and show you what we mean by diagrammatic representation. Okay. So here we have, and let me get back to this. Okay. Let me share. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm sharing you the one illustration. We have seen this placement of illustration. Next. Now, for instance, there is an information which I can I can explain this in about four pages, and the same thing I have explained to you in about half page in the form of a nice uh, diagram. A nice diagram. So this is known as diagrammatic uh, representation, where we can use, for instance, uh, you can see this diagram. Okay, this is a, one of the examples of uh, diagrammatic representation. So this is easier for a reader to understand. He can understand very quickly. At a quick glance, he's able to know and he's able to, in fact, remember it, remember it better than uh, perhaps remembering the entire text uh, of uh, this uh, of this information, so it's easier for him to uh, go in for this kind of a thing. So this is where I I mean is what we call it as. So I hope you are able to see it. Please, I hope yeah, you have, I hope you are able to see this now. Yeah, I now will stop sharing and get back to the class. Okay, yeah, and likewise we have what is known as. Uh, when we talked about diagrammatic representation, we discussed about its importance also. So e everything can be, for instance, some irrigation project. Chief Minister is visiting um, uh, college forum, and he needs to be informed in very quick things. So he will be shown a chart, for instance, and he will be able to give limited. But there are certain disadvantages at the same time. Also, advantages are there. There are some limitations also. Now let us first see. What exactly are the advantages? It saves time, okay? It enables you are able to understand quickly, and it makes it simpler to understand large amount of data. And uh, and typically, remember, we we can for example revenue of a state budget to be shown in a pie diagram or a circle diagram. You can easily know how much the money is going, how much money is being spent, and how much you are getting benefit, how much irrigation, how much rural development you are spending. How much for social sector? How much for education? How much for urban and how much for flyovers? How much for this that strategic road program and everything? You can easily have a quick glance. These are all advantages of that, but there are also sometimes, sir, you know, uh, disadvantages also. That is very essential for us to understand. So please remember, diagrams are they are only approximations of the exact figure. So you cannot say exactly that is where. So when it comes to Precision, you can't really do that kind of a thing in a diagram. Okay, in statistical data, yes. Okay, diagrammatic. So two or three dimensional diagrams, two, three, two days. Sometimes you can have two, two D, or sometimes you may have three D. So they are very difficult to understand, and the figures in statistical table. So it depends on how you're going to use it. So please remember, uh, we have always rules to do that. And what are the things that we have got? Uh, in the form of diagram, it can be in the form of a chart. So charts can be used, and in chart we have got again a relationship chart, a comparison chart. We got Venn diagram, distribution chart, composition. Chart. We have so many flow or process chart. The one which I have shown you, diagram, something like that only. We have graphs again. We can have pictographs in the form of picture. We can have bar graph. We can also have stem and leaf plot. We can have that way also. We can have a histogram. We can have a time series graph. We can have a dot plot. We can also have a scattered plot. Also, it can we can also show. So these are all different ways of uh, diagrammatic representation. And you select a particular type of diagram depending on uh, the purpose for which you want it. Actually, so you cannot uh, do it as you like it. So similarly, we have bar charts where we can see bars. We don't call bar chart because the bar, so the bars show very clearly the up and down of the of the data of the information. Rectangular diagram, rectangle diagram also will be able to help us. Square diagram also helps us to understand how you want to have it. So picture diagram will help us to know what exactly we mean by a pictograph. A pictograph is something like how we make use of. Uh, we have given that in your course material also. 
So these are all the things uh, that we have got here. Uh, what you call it as the the uh, the way we have in the form of uh, uh, thing. We have the next uh, unit, which is actually technical in nature. So I'll come up with new PowerPoint presentation uh, next time when I come up with the PowerPoint presentation. I will also let you know what we mean by uh, what you call it as uh, the production and printing processes. Now we have come to a stage where uh, the 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 layout and design part is taken up. So what is a layout? What exactly is a layout? Uh, how do you, as I told you earlier, it is not simply placement or demonstration, but some kind of a fixed thing. So please remember that in a newspaper, every page has a layout. So every page differs in its layout compared to the next page. Don't worry about the first page and the second page. They are all advertisements. Advertisement, you don't have to worry. They come directly from advertising agency. It is coming in a ready-made page, only to ready to be printed. Let us take, for instance, this one. Now, here is the thing. Now, normally what happens in case of a newspaper or in case of a house journal also, what we do is this editorial board people sit and then they discuss it. Which news will go where? And they discuss about the advertisement. So, half the page is reserved for advertisement. They need not worry about this now. The editor need not worry about the bottom half of this page, for instance. But yes, here, for instance, they have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stories. Now, all these stories are ready, photographs are ready. So, here you can see one bar chart, bar is given. Here you see another chart used. Okay, diagrammatic representation, diagrammatic representation, photograph. And you have got photograph here also. You have got photographs here also. Here on the top also. Now, for instance, this is this is this is how. how what do you do when we call it as layout? What do you mean by laying? Laying out is we will be laying out these parts of the page like this. So why this should be in the left left side of the page? Why this is on the right side of the page? Why this is bold lettering? Why this is light lettering? So why is it like this? Why is it like this? On a high, it is in red color. So, for instance, a layout artist takes care of all this. Where to position which item? Even this is normally decided in the editorial meeting. And layout artist then and there can on the computer make, on the computer he can make, and he can transfer it to the LCD projector. And on the screen, the editorial board, normally for the first page, they ensure that it is seen by three or four people before it is sent to other pages are normally mechanically uh, prepared very uh, in a quick way. But print page, first page is given a lot of importance because it is the first page that is seen by most of the readers. Okay, So then this is how it is. Layout means how do you lay out the elements? How do you put all these things? In? Earlier it used to be different altogether and now in computer you are able to do it. So we have in fact yeah, we have in fact a software called as Quark Express, for instance, which is a layout program. <coughs> so on the monitor, you will have grid of columns. You just take it from the file and then position it there. And then you are able to do very quickly a layout. Layout is positioning of the stories on the page. And each page, we make a layout. So it is not simply just like that. So please see one instance. This is a separate page. You need not worry about this advertisement, complete advertisement. But the remaining part of the page. For the remaining part of the page, we have, for instance, you have got here a photograph, a headline, a story, a story like this, like this, like this. So why do we arrange this? This why it is two columns. <coughs> it is two columns, it is single column, it is three, three columns. So you have to decide how a story should go depending on the amount of space available at your disposal. So how many stories are here? Eight. No. So this is only the whole thing is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On average, you are finding that six to seven stories go in a page. And when you are positioning these stories, that is known as layout. 
The same thing happens in the title cover of your annual report. The same thing happens in the title cover of your diary or your house journal or your publication. We have to do the layout. In a simple thing like a poster also, we have to have a layout. Suppose there is a poster like this. You want to bring out a poster like this. So this is a poster. Of course, here it is an advertisement. Suppose we want to bring a poster. Even that is properly designed. That is properly arranged. That is actually positioned. So this positioning of various elements in a page, for instance, it can be anything. Even a simple envelope when you design, there also you will be, uh, you know, uh, positioning the logo, positioning the address, positioning to where you will put the stamp. Even that is also a layout. In, even visiting card, you want your name, you want your designation. How do you want it? You want your phone number, mail address, website address, and any information is there also. Even the smallest piece called as the visit business card or the visiting card has what is known as a layout. So layout is not confined to bigger publications like newspapers and so on. It is confined to every publication that you bring out, including a pamphlet. So that is also a known as a layout. So your currency note is also a layout. There it is position, the denomination, the logo, the Gandhi figure, the security mark. Everything is properly laid out on the page, on the space available. Whether it is a currency note, whether it is a small stamp, or whether it is an envelope, or a business card, or a poster, or a holding, or a newspaper page, or a house journal page, or catalog, okay, or any publication that you bring out, we need to position the uh, the, the the parts that you have already selected for this page. So for the so for instance, take uh, into this page for instance. Here, for instance, here is another page you know, how many students are here. So here also, for instance, you see here, then this is again for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight column story. So here you have one, two, three, four column story. Here you have ads. Here two columns. Here is three columns. Here is the one, two, three, four columns. Four, three, four, three, two, two, one, eight. Eight, four, three, two, one. So for in some kind of a combination, you are able to lay the text, lay the headline, lay the photograph, and lay the entire story here, entire story here. So what you are doing in laying out, you are preparing this in the form of a plan. So you, before it goes for the next day's paper, you are able to have an idea how your entire page is going to look. This is what we mean by layout. So here again we have a layout. Every page has a layout like so the entire product entire publication is laid out this is what we mean by layout so we arrange all those elements if there can be the illustrations it can be drawings it can be photographs cartoon it can be anything also page number what exactly you want to have so that is very essential what are the essentials of a uh, of a good layout is that it should be able to attract the reader okay and the first paragraph first few paragraphs to tempt the reader to read all the stories without ignoring even one of the stories. In other words, the layout of each story, the layout of the entire page, attracts the reader in such a way that he doesn't want to miss any of the story, seven stories or eight stories in the page. He is not able to miss even one story because you have done some, you have given some special attention of how the text should be set, how the illustration should be positioned, how the diagram should be looking, what is the color balance, what is the background, whether it's a box item, whether it is trying to disturb the reader's attention or whether it's trying to make the reader seamless. Seamless means without any trouble, smooth way of seeing. So layout of corporate publication is a special, uh, is a special uh, you know, task which is given to the PRO to ensure the corporate publication will bring out the best uh, in their way of, uh, you know, the way they bring it out. So please remember text component. How do you do text component? You know, all those things are taken into consideration. Uh, you have different categories of text combination. So sometimes you can have left alignment, right alignment, centered, 
or in the form of uh, uh, justified setting. These are all the things. For instance, somebody is writing a poem, a poem in your for your house journal. You got it from a from a from a school child of your employee. You can position that in center. How do you want to position this? All those things. Flush left, flush right. Setting of headlines. How would you set the headlines? So you can have all kinds of uh, you know. You can work out many ways by which you can set the headline. You can display the pictures. You can display in one vertical way, one horizontal way, diagonal way. You can do all those things as you can see in some of the pictures that we try to give. Now, earlier days, it used to be done uh, meticulously, very painstakingly by the artist in those days, layout artist. Now, a layout artist is there. For him, the tools are his mouse and a software. So the software, as I told you, is a page layout software. And so we have a page making software. We have a page layout software. We have illustration or image editing software. Page layout software helps you to position it of various, uh, you know, various stories in a page. Quark Express is one such software. It's very, very well known, very famous. Hindu uses Quark Express. Hindu uses customized Quark. It uses a customized software. It's a custom built. Uh, uh, software it uses for its page design. And Adobe InDesign, there is one more software known as Adobe InDesign, which takes care of the uh, page layout program. So that takes care of the page margins, size and position of images and figures, number and size of columns, gaps between columns. So the gap between columns is this white space that you have. See here, for instance, this is the gap between the columns. We call them as the, sometimes some, they are known as patterns also. See where we have what? as columns between the two columns, the white space, okay? That is also the gaps between columns. How do you have it? And then do we need the gap between the columns? Otherwise, the reader will jump to the next column also. We need them there. And how do you like to have color printing? How you want to have spot color printing? How you want to have some of the uh, chapter titles, section titles in case of books, headlines, subheads? How do you want to have the captions? How do you want to have the quotes, the graphs, or box outs, sidebars? All those things are taken into the page headers, page footers. How do you like to have all those things? So in uh, Quark Express, you can see the layout in front of you on the monitor. Your monitor is maybe small, maybe half of your newspaper page. But you, you are also having nowadays bigger monitors called A3 monitors, where you can see almost the exact size of the paper, but it is scaled. You can always have a look at how the page will look. You can also screen it on the wall and then see how much you are able to have that. So this is all what you know as content. You can also try to create some special attraction through typography, typefaces, type sizes. All these things are taken into consideration uh, how you are actually able to do it. And earlier days we used to have what is known as a dummy. A dummy is something, a rough idea of how your book will look even before the actual printing takes place. In other words, nowadays, because of technology, I can really make a printed book and give it to you. One copy only, I can print it and give it to you, which means I can do layout, I can print a thing, I can bind it, I can put a title cover, and I can give it to you as one sample copy. Earlier days, it was not possible. We had to prepare one blank copy and give it, it was known as dummy. Dummy is nowadays not existing. It is no more, but some places still they are trying to do it to save money because uh, they, doing a printed copy will be difficult. Okay, so this is the the, the layout part of it. Uh, this is uh, what is known as unit uh, six layout. So we will think about the next unit in the next class. I'll try to come up with a uh, with a PowerPoint tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a class in the morning where we'll discuss about. Uh, production techniques, like how each one, we'll try our best to see how to produce a folder, how to produce a, uh, you know, a, how to design a folder, how to produce a brochure, how to design, how to produce an annual report. These each one we'll try to discuss tomorrow in tomorrow's class. Yeah, I know, I know you're not there. Nobody is there, participants, only myself and the host. So I hope you are able to understand. If you have any questions, please let me know. And you can also send questions to my WhatsApp or to email where I can try to answer you, answer your questions to you. Okay. Otherwise, everything should be okay. Uh, if you have any doubt, we have five minutes more to go.
put it in the chat to be try to discuss today. Please, I will look at the chat. We have about three minutes to go. So we see this. I will be happy if we go to some of the posts. We may come up with any questions through chat also. So that's all for the day today. And uh, I'll go on it today. Thank you.